everybody! Welcome to Gwen TV, and this is Gwen. Welcome back. It's been a month, and it's the 23rd of October. 10월 23일이죠. And I know it's been almost like 10 months since we've been going through this pandemic situation, but still we have this like you know, online platform where we could, we could still talk. And communicate. So we're grateful about that, right? And Hoa Le Hong is already here, right? Hopefully I meet you. Yeah, I'm here. Hopefully you're still there. And yeah, um, it's getting a little colder in Korea. I guess it's fall, of course, the winter's coming, so it's getting a little by little colder. But ho I hope like fall, autumn season stays a little longer. Because, you know, cold, it's too cold in winter in Korea. It's really dry. It's freaking dry. I have this plant growing back there. I've been like taking care of this plant for about like six, five months. Because, you know, like during this corona situation, you have nowhere to go. You're staying home. You have to do something. And, you know, I lost my dog about two years ago. And after, since then, I didn't feel like getting a dog or a cat. So... You know, it's really sad to lose somebody you really love or some, yeah. So anyway, I have this plant and, you know, it's a kind of fern, fern, F-E-R-N, fern. And in Korean, it's kusari. And, you know, ferns grow in very wet, like, you know, environment. So because, like, this weather in Korea is so dry, I have to water this plant almost, like, twi oh, twice or three times a week. When I first bought it, they said like I can just water it maybe once a week, but I water it like twice, three times a week. So yeah, this place is freaking dry. Kyle, hi, you're from Vietnam. Welcome to the show. Great to have you here. I always tell you guys, I was in Vietnam, Da Nang, three years ago with my family. My whole family went there and it was beautiful. I went to that place on the mountaintop. There was like a like theme park on the mountain and it was so great to be on that cable car to go all the way to the mountain. It was good. And Teiji, as always, you're here. Good evening. Yes. Guys, tell me about the situation in Vietnam and in Japan. How are things there? Is the corona, like COVID-19 situation any better? Because in Korea, it's getting better. Um, we have like these levels that they warn us. It used to be like 2.5. Hello, Keiko. Yes. But now it's, um, we went through two and then now we're down to one. So yeah, we can have like small gatherings, not big gatherings. And thankfully we were able to have a wedding ceremony last week. Actually, my brother my little brother got married last weekend so that was a bit of a like thing there going on a lot of things like a lot of relatives were able to come and a lot of friends were able to come so we were very thankful about that i mean this wedding has been put off multiple times and then oh you know we finally had to do it yeah despite the corona like everything so we had to do it and before when the level was 2.5 we were only able to invite 49 people can you imagine 49 people i mean 49 people including the bride and the groom that's like you know only 47 people and then you have your parents your siblings like me and literally you cannot invite any friends over but we were very fortunate we went down to level one so we were able to invite nearly nearly 200 people it was like you know some gathering you could you know hardly ever see in this corona kind of situation so it was very good yeah we had a fun time afterwards and we it was really unlike my whole family my brother and my new sister-in-law was very thankful that a lot of people came despite the COVID situation. Good evening, Gwen teacher. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Kyle, in Vietnam, the traffic and community are more comfortable. There are still several cases of foreign people to our country, so things still need to be careful. All right, I have a question for Kyle or anybody in Vietnam. So if anybody like foreigner goes to Vietnam, do we have to get quarantined? Do we have to be quarantined for like two weeks? Because in Korea, whether you're a foreigner or Korean, if you're coming from any place abroad, you have to be quarantined for two weeks. 
I'm wondering if it's the same in Vietnam. Or what about Japan? Do people have to be quarantined? Let me know. Yeah, we have some Japanese friends here, so I guess it's a great time to, you know, share this information because locals know everything better, right? Locals know things better. So let me know. In Korea, anybody, like any, any Koreans coming from abroad and any foreigners coming from abroad, we're open. Foreigners can come, yeah, we're open, but um, they have to be quarantined. And it's not that cheap to get quarantined because I hear that you have to pay $100 per night at this quarantine facility and, you know, $100 times two weeks. That's 14 days. So that's like almost $14,000. No, 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 $1,400. That's a lot of money, right? So before you even do anything in Korea, you have to pay that money. So it's a little like too much for most of the people. All right, so yeah, this COVID, they say the vaccine's coming out soon, maybe in the middle of next year. <laughs> so I guess we have to get more and more used to, uh, you know, this online, you know, whole environment. Nya Ha Hya Nim says, thanks to Gwen teacher, I got a TOEIC speaking level six for the first time. Thank you so much. Wow, really? When did you take the test? That's really good. Level six, it's a good starter. So nyahahanim, why don't you aim higher? Why don't you go for maybe level seven? Okay, next time, just keep up the great work. Okay, you did a great job. That's really good. Level six, great. Kyle, uh, yeah, it happened to Indians here. When they come here, they have to accept quarantine to prevent from the spread of COVID-19. But what about Koreans? Do Koreans have to get... Because um, I really want to go somewhere. I know it's it's really hard to go somewhere. But um, yeah, I mean, like, if until next year, we can't go somewhere. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen to myself. But yeah, it's really, really hard. I mean, Teiji, don't you have to, like, go on business trips? You used to go on business trips a lot to USA, right? Well, it's really hard. Hmm. Yeah, the situation hopefully will get better. And they say, I'm not a great believer of God, but they say God gives us all these like hardships, only enough, just enough that we can go through them. So hopefully he or she is going to stop this in the close future. Okay. All right, so uh, let's start the show. That was a very warm intro. No, it was very heated. I got heated up. <laughs> Okay, so uh, today, again, is Friday, October 23rd, 2020. Um, and yeah, we're going to talk about TOEIC speaking questions. And earlier, I had my friend Teiji from Japan send in some recordings of this test. And I heard his answers, and I want to share some of my comments regarding, you know, those things. So let me tell you about it. All right, well, before we do, we share any comments. Let me show you the first passage. Okay, now Teiji, uh, this is some like very personal comment for Teiji, but while I was listening to your, you know, recording, I figured your English improved a lot. I mean, like the, you know, the, the answer, content of your answers are really, really great. It's really well, you know, fab uh, um, made. Uh, but, you know, it's it's like some common problem that happens to Koreans and Japanese. You know, we both suck in, you know, pronunciation. And it there is a great chance that you can't, you're not getting level 7 because of your pronunciation. And you cannot blame yourself for that because we're foreigners. We're learning English as a foreigner and it's really hard to make the right pronunciation being Korean and being Japanese. So that's not your fault. But you have to improve your pronunciation if you really want to get level seven, okay? So that's like one thing that I was really um, concerned about, all right? And I'm gonna show you what you can work on, all right? I'm gonna show you how you can improve this. All right, now uh, let me read this passage once and I'm going to ask you guys to type in some words that you would like to hear the pronunciation of or you would like to get tips on how to make the right pronunciation, okay? So first of all, let me read this for you, okay? It's got to be very natural. It doesn't have to be fast. It's got to be natural. 
Welcome back to Channel 8 Weather Forecast. I'm Chris Rodney and I have some updates to share with you about this week's weather. Winter is coming up and the temperature is expected to drop below 0 degrees Celsius during the upcoming week. Please make sure to put on a heavy jacket, gloves and boots when going outside. Coming up next is the sports news. Okay, now if you ask me, a lot of people leave comments on my channel asking me how come your pronunciation is so good? And that's because I grew up in the States, you know, I went to America when I was seven years old and I first was in LA and then I went to Michigan and Arbor and then later on in college I was in the southern state which is Mississippi but I wasn't able to gain that southern accent. But anyways, I have fluent, uh, you know, pronunciation because I grew up in the States, so I wasn't born there, but literally I have two mother tongue, English and Korean. So that's why my pronunciation is good. But I can sort of like imitate how Koreans would read, a typical Korean would read this passage. And that would be something like this. Welcome back to Channel 8 Weather Forecast. I am Chris Rodney and I have some updates to share with you about this week's weather. Winter is coming up and temperature is expected to drop below 0 degrees Celsius during the upcoming week. Please make sure to put on a heavy jacket, gloves and boots when going outside. Coming up next is the sports news. Okay, and I find the reason to that because of our native language. Because Korean language, I know a lot of foreigners are learning Korean these days, have these like very choppy, choppy sounds. You know, we say sports, but we don't say sports. We say sports. We say news. In Korean, we use the same word as the same meaning, news, but we say news. Okay? We say channel. We say channel, but we say channel. Okay? Now that's the problem Oh, you know, which like most Korean people have when they pronounce those like English words, when they read English passages. So it's like chopped off, the sounds are chopped off. And Teji, that's the exact same problem you have right now. So I always tell my students when you're practicing reading English aloud, you got to sort of like stretch out the sounds. So it shouldn't be Welcome back to Channel 8 Weather Forecast. It's going to be Welcome back to Channel 8 Weather Forecast. You have to sort of link all the words. I am Chris Rodney and I have some update to share with you. I'm Chris Rodney and I have some updates to share with you about this week's weather. It's as if you're singing a song, all right? It's as if you're singing a song. You cannot, you know, chop off all the words. And that was one problem I had with all of your answers, Teji. So that's one thing that you have to work on. Yeah. We need to get level seven before the year 2020 goes, right? You need to get it. And want you, I want to help you get it. So we need to work on that, your pronunciation. So the easiest, the best way to work on that is like, you know, get like, uh, get a, uh, let's say, song could work a pop song like english pop song or um american movie could work you have to like follow whatever native speaker does just just follow the sound like you know what they say like how babies learn a language you just have to follow follow what they say so when they say welcome back you say welcome back don't say welcome back don't do it your way welcome back is your way if the native speaker says welcome back, say the exact same thing by saying welcome back, okay? So the sound, the level tone, the length, everything has to be the same. All right, now I'm gonna look at the chat room. Wow, a lot there. Okay, um, Kyle, I have to get, go back to my hometown and no longer stay in HCMC and now I'm missing it too much, oh yeah. How can we pronounce possessive, possessive, such as the week's weather? Oh, weeks. This week's weather. All right. So when there's S sounds, okay, the one before, the consonant or whatever sound that happens before the S sound dominates the S sound. For instance, K is a voiceless sound. It's K, K, K. And 
S, when S comes after the voiceless sound, it's s, weeks, weeks weather, this week's weather, this week's weather, okay? But if the possessive S comes after, um, let's say, mm, uh, okay, my name Gwen, Gwen, right? Gwen ends with an N and N is a voiced sound. Voice sound means Gwen, Gwen. And after that N sound, when S comes, it's got to be the Z sound. So it's Gwen's, Gwen's, Gwen's weather forecast, Gwen's weather forecast. So this week's weather, it's got to be S, not Z. Okay. Hello, Brenda. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining. Uh, Hua Le Hong says, wow, your sound is very nice. I can understand all your talk, but don't talk so deep. I will take TOEIC speaking test in September. Could you help me fix it? Okay. All right. I will try not to talk too fast because I know we are all here to learn English. Yeah. Just let me know. I can repeat whatever you guys want me to, you know, say again. So again, uh, Kyle, it's this week's, you have to make that strong S sound, this week's weather forecast, okay? This week's weather forecast, okay? Or Gwen's channel, Gwen's channel, Gwen's channel. All right. And um, similar things happen here, sports news. When S is in that like middle between T and N, you have to say sports. That's the S sound there because T is a voiceless sound. So you have to say sports news, sports news, okay? So what was I say? Oh, about like singing, as if you're like singing, okay? Imagine yourself singing this passage like welcome back to channel 8 weather forecast i'm chris ronnie and i have some updates to share with you about this week's weather weather is coming up and the temperature is expected to drop below zero degrees celsius during the upcoming week please make sure to put on the heavy jacket gloves and boots when going outside coming up next is the sports news so you just got to sort of like, you know, push out that sound to link all the words. That's the key to reading English. Okay. And the word like temperature could be a little hard to read. Temperature, temperature. And for Koreans, we have our time reading the DR sound, which has to be drop, drop, not turo, turo. No, it's drop. Okay, drop. So try to make that z z drop, drop. It's more like a J sound. Drop, drop below zero degrees. Okay, so let me read it once again for you. Okay, I'm not gonna fool around. I'm gonna make it clear, slowly and clear. Welcome back to Channel 8 Weather Forecast. I'm Chris Roddy, and I have some updates to share with you about this week's weather. Winter is coming up and temperature is expected to drop below zero degrees Celsius during the upcoming week. Please make sure to put on a heavy jacket, gloves, and boots when going outside. Coming up next is the sports news. Okay. All right. Brenda. Hi, Gwen. I've been following your channel since I saw it two weeks ago, and I'm really thankful for all the useful tips you have given us. Thank you. Thank you for making it useful okay make use out of it you know i've been teaching toy speaking since the before it even came out came out in um 2006 it first took place in korea in 2006 and i believe as far as i remember korea is the first place first country to have the toy speaking test and uh, it was 2006 december and i was there for the first test and before even the first test happened i started teaching toy speaking i had no idea what to teach yeah i i literally had no idea because i wasn't in this like teaching you know field but yeah it's challenging but it's fun it's really fun and very rewarding to teach somebody let people know what they need help people like get what they need it's really rewarding so ask me any questions guys ask me anything <laughs> okay and oh and another tip for part one you know whenever you go read part one you know you have tons of time remaining like they, they give you 45 seconds but when i read it i have like 25 seconds remaining and that's a lot of time 
you're like you're sitting there you're here to take a test and you have too much time there remaining on the screen and you don't know what to do but you actually finished reading the passage so you're like frustrated what am i supposed to do like this so what i do is i just i don't read it just once i read it twice yeah, sometimes I even have time remaining after reading it twice. So even after like two times of reading, when I have time remaining, I go for the third time. You just keep on reading until the time cuts you off. It doesn't matter whether you get cut off or not because you already read it once, right? You already read it, okay? Just like keep on reading like a broken record. Just keep reading, reading, reading until you get cut off and it's fine, all right? And if you're not comfortable reading it twice, just read it once and just sit there. Doesn't matter. And it's not only you who have time remaining because it's designed to be like that. They don't want you to read it fast. They don't want you to speed up. They want you to read it clearly and show them where the meaning phrases are. The meaning phrases, okay? So let me read the second passage and show you the meaning phrase. Thanks for tuning in to my podcast during your precious lunchtime. My name is Scott Wilson, the host of Lunch and Art, where you get to hear all kinds of behind stories of local artists, their work, and art events. Today, we have a special guest on our show, a high school art teacher who has become famous for graffiti art. Please welcome Cindy Hewitt. Okay, so here are some pointers. When you are making, you know, meaning phrases, it's all about the prepositions. It's all about the dots, the, you know, like periods. And um, it's all about where the conjunctions are. So I will show you more clearly where those, you know, stops should be happen. Thanks for tuning in to my podcast during your precious lunchtime. My name is Scott Wilson, the host of Lunch and Art, where you get to hear all kinds of behind stories of local artists, their work, and art events. Today, we have a special guest on our show, a high school art teacher who has become famous for her graffiti art. Please welcome Cindy Hewitt. Now, graffiti, graffiti, gra, could it piti? Some Koreans would say it, could it piti? But graffiti, graffiti, fi has the stress, is an art that you, you know, sort of like draw very freely on the wall in the streets. Yeah. So some parts of the city, it's prohibited. You're not supposed to do it. But, you know, it's in Korean, it's dakso. It's like dueling somewhere, like you're just writing and, you know, like painting. It's illegal in some cities, but, you know, in some parts of the city, they allow it. They encourage some artists to do it. So she's doing graffiti art. You know, when you see like pictures or videos of Manhattan, we see lots of graffitis on the street walls. Those are called graffiti, graffiti art. Okay. So I showed you those meaning phrases. Meaning phrases are very important for part one. Just remember that. Okay. All right, and do you plan to do videos on toy writing as well? Yeah, I'm planning on that. And actually, toy writing is so easy. I'm going to give you some tippers on toy writing while I'm dealing with some other parts here today because it's so similar. It is so similar, okay? Just wait until part two because I have lots of things to tell you about toy writing before I even do videos on that, all right? Today on the show. Okay, so... Um, any questions, guys? Like meaning phrases? Do you get it? Meaning phrases? Fine. Okay. So it's very important to make the right me stop. Not stops. You don't stop, actually. Because when I read this, I would say thanks for tuning in to my podcast during your precious lunchtime. I never stopped until the word time. I was sort of like pushing the meaning phrases away. I was saying, thanks for tuning in to my podcast during your precious lunchtime. As if I'm singing. I told you before, as if I am singing, okay? But like some people think that making meaning phrases are something, is something similar to stopping, making stops. Some people would do something like this. Thanks for tuning in to my podcast 
during your precious lunch time. No, don't stop. Do not stop. Okay, you always have to link the sounds when you're reading one full English sentence. You never stop. That's like a big tip there. All right. And the word, my name is Scott Wilson. You can read it Scott or you can say Scott. Doesn't matter. Mm. Um, so uh, thank uh, uh, Scott Wilson, the host of Lunch and Art. Lunch and Art. See, I didn't say lunchy and art. I said luncheon art, luncheon art, where you get to hear all kinds of behind stories of stories of. I was linking the sounds, right? Stories of local artists, artists. That's an S sound. Their work and art events. That's also an S sound. Today we have a special guest, Don. Guest Don. Guest guest on our show. So I was sort of pushing the word guest to make that like space between guest and on guest on our show, but I was still like holding on to the sound and made made it link between T and O. Guest on our show. Did you hear that? Guest on our show, a high school art teacher who has become famous famous for her graffiti art. Graffiti. Remember that sound. Please welcome Cindy Hewitt. All right, Cindy Hewitt. You can say Cindy Hewitt. They wouldn't care. Cindy Hewitt. It's fine, as long as you know how to make the English, you know, sound alphabet sounds. That's fine. But normally we read that word as Hewitt. Okay, so let me read this once again for you, and it's gonna be not so fast. I'm going moderate speed, and I'm going to try to show the meaning phrases as much as I could. Thanks for tuning in to my podcast during your precious lunch time. My name is Scott Wilson, the host of Lunch and Art, where you get to hear all kinds of behind stories of local artists, their work, and art events. Today we have a special guest on our show, a high school art teacher who has become famous for her graffiti art. Please welcome Cindy Hewitt. Now, even when I was reading just those four words, please welcome Cindy Hewitt. Okay, I I didn't just say please welcome Cindy Hewitt. I said please welcome Cindy Hewitt. I sort of made that you know obvious like you know space there. Please welcome, and I sort of pushed it away, Cindy Hewitt, because obviously I cannot stop in the middle of Cindy and Hewitt because that's one name, right? That's a meaning phrase. So I had to say please welcome Cindy Hewitt. Okay. All right, so that was a warming up part, which is part one. Yeah, it's always fun to talk about part one because people think it's not so hard, but it's hard actually. It is because you know whether you do good or do well on part one and or not really does have a big influence on your overall like level. Because you know those raters, the people who give you the score, the levels, they gotta understand what you're saying. In order to give you the score or the level, so you gotta have clear sound production. You have to know how to make the right sound in English. That's every time I always say that, right? By the way, kudos to my um, uh, my student from back in like two thousand six, I think. He went to Hawaii on his honeymoon, and he bought this for me. It was like several months ago, but we met recently. On my brother's wedding day, so this is like a cup from Hawaii. They say this is like a symbol of Starbucks Hawaii. Yeah. Hmm. And it's just water. <laughs> it's just water. Yeah. Okay, so here is a picture. It's a picture. All right. So、uh, let's see. Why don't you just like you know give me some words that you could see in the picture, guys? Do you see any words here? Let me know. Okay. Nobody knows. I'm wondering if my students, my Korean students, are here today. Okay. So, guys, do you see any、um, words here? Brenda, yeah, give me some words, cause 
You know, when you go take the toy writing test, you have five of these, right? You get five of these pictures and you have to write one sentence using the words they give you, right? And it doesn't have to be that hard. Mm, it doesn't have to be that hard. You can just go with like simple sentences and they wouldn't care as long as you don't make any grammatical mistakes, okay? So it's better to go with the easy one. Mm. Go with simple sentence. Try to write whatever you see in this picture. Use prepositions. Use some verbs to show their actions. Use um, some nouns to show their features, how they look. And it's really, really important to not make any grammatical mistakes, okay? Don't make any grammatical mistakes. And you got to put that, you know, punctuation mark, period. Okay. No words from nobody. Let me know. Oh, Brenda says the picture is taken in a room. I can see two people. The woman is okay. The picture is taken in a room. Perfectly good. I can see two people. Okay. Now, Brenda, if you want to advance or you know, make your sentences a little bit longer, try to use prepositions. So you can say, I can see two people on a sofa. It's as simple as that, okay? I can see two people sitting next to each other or just next to each other. Try to use a prepositional phrase to lengthen your sentence, to make it longer then you could get better score for first five questions on toy writing. Yes. So prepositional phrase is the key. And it seems like you know how to use it. So I can see two people sitting on a couch. In America, we call it couch. Or you can say, I can see two people sitting on a sofa or a chair. Okay. And any more words related to the picture? Any more words? Let me know. Hmm. Let me make it bigger. Yeah, this is what's happening here, guys. This is what's happening. Yeah, we see two people. That's true, like Brenda said. And yeah, you know, whenever I prepare these pictures, I told you guys I pay for them, right? You guys have to make use out of it. I paid for this picture because I wanted like, you know, right to use the picture. I didn't want to just like download a picture, a random picture on, you know, from Google because that is sort of illegal, right? That is. 안녕하세요, 서준님. <laughs> Welcome back, Sojun. By the way, Sojun, congratulations on your level seven on getting your level seven. Congratulations. I know you worked really hard on that. Okay. All right. Uh, Brenda says the woman has a ponytail and is wearing a red shirt. That was perfectly right. Is wearing. The man is wearing a blue shirt and a pair of jeans. Both of them. Now, when you're taking the toy writing test, you got to use the capital for B in the word both because that's the first word of a sentence, right? So those things are very important for toy writing. So it's got to be both of them with a capital B are smiling while looking for something inside a box. That was good. Looking for something inside a box. That was very good. Teiji, he's wearing a blue shirt and jeans. He's wearing a blue shirt and jeans with what? Okay. All right, so Lee Seo Jun, this guy here, uh, uh, who's writing Korean, obviously, uh, is one of my students, and he had like a special lecture se session, like private session, and he had a hard time getting level seven. Seven. He was stuck in that level six zone. And I was teaching him and I was giving some coaching on like your grammatical mistakes because he said lots of things whenever he took a test, but, you know, he just couldn't come out with... Mm, level seven. I told him it's all about grammar. So Sojun had to work on his like, you know, uh, like tenses, like past tense, present tense, and know how to use the right preposition. And yeah, 
finally he got level 7. So I'm really proud of you, Sajun. <laughs> a torn left knee. Okay. Teiji, that was very good detail. All right. But I, I suggest you don't work that much on the details. All right. You don't have to be that specific. You don't have to be that specific about what people are wearing. Okay. And by the way, you know the red shirt the girl is wearing, the woman is wearing? It's called plaid shirt. Plaid. Plaid. And can somebody type in the spelling for me? P-L-A-I-D shirt. It's a plaid shirt. Okay? So when I Google it, I'll Google it for you. It's P-L-A-I-D. It's not check shirt. Don't say check shirt. It's, it's better to say plaid shirt. Okay, so I Googled it and I... I'm showing you the images and these are what appears when I Google the word plaid. P-L-A-I-D. You get the idea? This, these, like those patterns. It's called plaid shirt. P-L-A-I-D. It's plaid. Plaid shirt. Somebody please type it in for me. Okay, so she's wearing a plaid shirt. You can just say she's wearing a red shirt, but plaid is more specific. Oh, okay, and Kyle said on the right side of the picture, there's a man. He's wearing a blue top and a blue jeans. Okay, Kyle, it's not a blue jeans. It's a pair of blue jeans like Brenda said before and he's smiling. That's good. This picture was probably taken in the living room. There are two people in this picture. That was very good. It's Mr. Lim, right? I know that word. It's Lim. I know a few Chinese, okay? And uh, I want to show you something. Okay, now, recently, recently, okay. I have a phone here, okay. Now, recently, ETS has been throwing some pictures like this where people are actually putting something in, oh, uh, putting something into a cup putting something into a cup. So she's putting a phone into a cup, right? I'm putting a phone into a cup or I'm taking a phone out. Taking a phone, taking something out of a cup. I'm taking a phone out of a cup, okay? So I'm putting something into a cup or they are taking something out of or out from a box. They're taking something out of a box or out from a box is what you could say. So make sure you know how to use those expressions as well. You are right, Brenda, about saying looking for something, but they specifically want you to say verbs like putting something into a box or taking something out of the box or out from the box, okay? So I want you guys to remember those two expressions. Those expressions seem very important these days. Comes out oftentimes. And uh, Brenda, there are a few things on the table, such as glasses, yeah, a water container. In the background, there's a big thing there. They seem to be having a good time. That was very well done. Nicely done. Okay, so your name is Monica. Welcome to the show, Monica. Yay, Taiwan. Yes. <laughs> I love Taipei, Taiwan. I've been to Tainan as well. It was good. Hua Leng Hong. This picture shows inside with two people. They're sitting together. Okay, now Hua Leng Hong. Okay, what you would, uh, what I suggest you do is please make the introduction of the picture into two sentences. Don't try to put it into one. Don't put everything in one sentence. Say, this is a picture taken in a room and there are two people in this picture. Okay, you don't have to use a long sentence. Just say, this is a picture taken in a room and there are two people in this picture. Okay, they're sitting together. In the foreground, I can see several glasses. Not in the table, it's on a table. On. It's on the surface. So you have to say on. On the middle. Okay, so it's not on the middle. It's in the middle. It's in the middle. I can see a woman who's wearing red shirt. Again, you could say plaid shirt. Next to her is a man. He's wearing a blue shirt. I guess they are searching something in the box. It seems... Okay. Hua Le Hong said, it seems, it seems, there's going to be S at the end. It seems like, it seems like everyone is very happy. Okay. All right. 
So when you are ending a sentence, I normally don't tell you know tell my students not to say it seems like it seems like okay I just tell them to use maybe maybe people are happy I like to use like simple words I want my students to use easy language and get level six or seven okay don't use complicated words or grammar structures just go with like easy ones okay the most important thing is not to make grammatical mistakes okay that's good that's good that you found it very helpful all right so uh, I would say oh and guys uh, I will uh, give you some um, expressions that maybe you could you know relate to associate with this picture here so let me show you how I would do it all right now this is a picture taken in a house and there are two people in this picture they look like a couple and in the middle of the picture, I can see a woman. She has brown hair and she's wearing a red plaid shirt. She is smiling and looking into a box. And next to her, there is a man. He has a beard and a mustache and he's wearing a blue shirt and jeans. He is also, um, you know, looking into the box and maybe he's trying to like take out something from the box and in the foreground of the picture I can see some glasses on the table and in the background of the picture I can see some windows and maybe they are moving into the house and maybe they are unpacking right now okay so I thought and this is my opinion this is my thought okay I think they're moving in right they're moving into the house and we see they're unboxing. You say unboxing or you can say unpacking a box. Unboxing or unpacking a box. Now those are some expressions you can associate with this picture. Okay? Or you didn't have to use them. You don't necessarily have to use those words. You can just say they are taking something out from a box and they are, you know, like smiling. They're sitting on a chair and they're wearing something. That's good enough. Oh, and one more tip, guys, make sure to tell the locations of each and everything that you're saying. So I said, in the middle of the picture, there's a woman and next to her, there's a man. I also said in the foreground of the picture, there are some glasses. And I also said in the background of the picture, there are some windows. So it's very, very important to give that information where that thing is that you want to talk about okay where that thing is that's very very important okay brenda when you're taking the toit writing test you don't necessarily have to talk about the location because you're just providing one sentence right and they're just going to give you some words already let's say um can somebody type in the words let's say on no 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 on and look Please somebody write, type in the word on look. What I want you guys to do is use these two words, the word on and the word look and make one sentence about this picture. Two words, use the word on and use the word look. On look. It doesn't matter whether you use on first or look first. I want you guys to use the word on and we use the word look. Yeah, those are two separate words. And write one sentence. Okay? Write one sentence. I want to see how well you can, you know, make one perfect sentence that could best describe this picture. Yeah, Brenda, very well done. That's very well, like you said, on slash look. Good. Everybody. Try to think up of one sentence using the word on and look and try to describe this picture. Yes. Anything related to this picture is fine. Anything you, want, you can say about this picture. On, look, on, look. <laughs> okay. Oh, by the way, Brenda, uh, where are you coming from? Are you coming from Spain? Are you the girl who sent me the DM on Instagram? Yeah, I've been getting lots of DMs nowadays.
write in the words. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Sentence. Type in a sentence. It's got to be one sentence. Yeah, one full sentence with no grammatical error. Oh, you're from Vietnam. Okay, Brenda. It seems like many people have English names nowadays. Yeah. Monica was from Taiwan. All right, Hua Lu Hong says, they're looking for something in the box on the table. Perfect. That is perfect. They're looking for something in the box on the table. Okay, so this is how you do it. Oh, they are looking for something. You're given the word look, so you can add the preposition for, or they are looking into a box on the table could be another way of saying it. That was very well written. And you have that capital T there for the word they, and then you have the period there, so everything's fine. And Brenda says, there are two people sitting on a couch and taking something from a box. Okay, taking out something. Brenda, it's gotta be taking out something from a box. All right, and there, the word there has to be capitalized. So it's gotta be the big T, H-E-R-E. Okay, they take out lots of points, take off lots of score, lots of points when you don't capitalize those words. Okay, so it's very important to always start your senses with big letter. So it's got to be big letter T H E R E. Okay, that was well done. All right, so that's how you do for toy writing part one. Toy writing part one, all you got to do is make simple sentence, simple one sentence per picture. There will be five pictures given, okay? And there will be words given. Okay, and make sure to remember capitalizing. That's very, very important. The punctuation part as well. Okay, and we're gonna move on to part three. Part three. Yes, Monica, you're welcome. Thank you for thanking me. <laughs> I'm very happy that you guys are having a good, you know, like something out of it, something out of my videos, yeah. We're planning something more, hopefully, by the end of this year. <laughs> All right, and this is what I'm going to ask you about. We're going to ask about historical sites. Historical sites. So recently, what I find about ETS toy speaking test and also writing tests, they ask a lot about like traveling, vacationing, and also about your hometown as a vacation spot. Okay, so your hometown. Like for instance, I live in Seoul. We have a lot of tourists. We had, we used to have a lot of tourists coming from, you know, all parts of the world because of like K-pop and like, you know, dramas and BTS, people were like flooding into Korea. And then all of a sudden there was this pandemic going on. So people stopped coming, but I work in the middle of Gangnam, you know, size Open Gangnam style, bum, bum, bum. I, I work in the middle of Gangnam. So I always see foreigners visiting my town and it's a great place. Korea, you have a lot of things to do. There are things to do. There are things to enjoy. There are things to eat. Although some of my friends, they complain that there are not many things to eat in Korea. But you know what? There are, there are, are a bunch of things to eat. <laughs> I gotta make a video on that, but anyway. But anyway, they ask you about your hometown. So you have to know what to talk about your hometown and try to introduce your place as a good tourist spot. So we have people here from Vietnam. We have people here from Taiwan. We have people here from Japan. So let's share, you know, everything, some good things about your hometown just let us know where to go, what to eat, what to do, and you could be using that as your answers for part three and part six. Believe me, they're asking you about these things. Okay, so let me know. Just type in some things about your hometown as tourist spot, as travel destination, as vacation destination, okay? Just try to show off what your town is like. I told you in Korea, we have Gangnam, we have Itaewon, it's very famous. We have Hongdae, we have Dongdaemun. And you, of course you come here and you eat Sangyeopsal, Chimek, Taipei 101, I've been there. Yes, 
You know what? <laughs> you know these guys? I know. If you are Taiwanese, you should know these two guys. Damper boys. Damper. Yeah, Taipei 101. These are like the characters of uh, that tall building in Taipei. Taipei 101 damper boys. I got these when I was in Taiwan. Cute, huh? Very cute. Very cute. <laughs> yeah. So damper boys. Mm hmm And this one is from Japan. It's from Japan. Starbucks. Yeah, you can see the red Japan symbol of a uh, Japanese flag and Sakura, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. So anyway, uh tell me everything about, you know, your hometown. Um today you look so elegant. Elegant, really. Really? Is it my earrings? <laughs> And uh, I often use part one toy listening for part one toy writing. Part one, oh yeah, you're right, yes. Part, part one toy listening and part one toy writing has big resemblance. They are very similar. They're actually like copied for the other way around version of each other. So it could help you, help, help you with that. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Guys, you have to tell me about places in your hometown, your uh, town that you're living, your place that you're living as a travel desti destination, and share me with me about historical sites, historical sites. Because in Korea, when you come, there's a place called Gyeongbokgung Palace. Gyeongbokgung Palace. It's like one of the destinations that you go when you come to Seoul. It's a big palace from Joseon Dynasty. And when you go there, of course, you get to see some, you know, ancient architecture like from long long time ago and also you get to try on these like traditional clothes called hanbok hanbok korean attire hanbok it's very beautiful and it comes in all sorts of beautiful colors so you you know wear them you take pictures and uh, that's like historical site like number one place that people go to and nearby that place there is this big statue of king sejong who invented Korean words, the language itself. So those are some historical sites that people go when they come here on a tour. And yeah, mm, those are some things that I, would, I could share. But you guys have to think about it too before we go into part three. Because, ta-da, this is the first question. Now, how often do you visit historical sites? And who do you usually go to historical sites with? How often do you visit historical sites? And who do you usually go to historical sites with? Okay, now for this question, you don't have to be totally honest. You don't have to be totally honest. You can lie and it's not really hard, right? You can say, I go there once or twice a year. In reality, I hardly ever go there, but I say once or twice a month, a year. And I usually go there, go to historical sites with my friends. When my foreign friends come visit, I take them to historical sites and I become a tour guide and I give them a tour around those historical sites. It's very fun and nice. Oh, you can say it's informative. Because you get to learn something when you go there. You learn something. So you can say it's educational, it's educational, or it's very informative, right? Okay, oh, now I have some. Okay, Longshan Temple in Taipei. Okay, whatever that place is, you can say it's very, very old and it's very educational. You can learn something right? And I visit historical sites once a week by myself. It's a kind of take a, ooh, it's a kind of take a week. Okay. I think Teiji, you're trying to say, I like to take a walk. I like to take a walk there. Okay. Take a walk, right? Mm, maybe we can try together. Maybe we can try together. 
Yes, guys, you guys can like try to like gather up and study toy together. A lot of Koreans do that. We do it online these days. Okay, and Tony and I visit historical sites one time per month, I think. Now, one time, once a month. You should say once a month. Okay, and Cho Jae Won Nim said, I visit historical sites once a month with my friend. Now, that sentence itself is perfect, Cho Won Nim, but you know what? You have to provide more information. We need to say more. You need to add more. You have to say at least three sentences. Now, this is a rule for part three, guys. For each and every five seconds, try to deliver one sentence, which means for 15 seconds, you have to say at least three sentences. Three. Three sentences, please. Okay? Not just one. Three. Chewan Nim, you have to add more. Okay, Monica, when I have free time, I like to go camping, traveling experience. Can I say something about camping? Um, if it is just about traveling, yeah, you can say things about camping. Camping is traveling, obviously. That's fine. But right now, we're talking about historical sites, right? So you have to prov provide something related to historical sites. That's why I said palace. And that's why Teji said temple. Temples are historical, right? Keiko, I visit historical sites once a month and usually go there with my husband. I went to went to Nagoya Castle last month. It is one of the famous castles in Japan. That was a great answer. I love the answer of Keiko. Okay, so Nagoya Castle, it, the name itself already sounds like some historical site. I usually visit historical sites once a month. I go there with my family since I live in Taiwan. We uh, got lots of places to choose from and it's also easy to go to. That's a great answer. Great. And Brenda, I tried to find time to join when you said you would live today. I hate it that I have to leave now for work. Will I be able to find this video later, teacher? Yes, Brenda. This video will be staying on the channel. It's being recorded right now, so you can see this show later on. Don't worry, just go back to work. You have to work, yeah. It's your working time. Go, go girl, go, just go work. It's gonna be here, so you can always see it. Watch it later, okay? Bye-bye, I'll see you next month, though. Taewon <laughs> Nim. Oh, you're gonna add. Last month, I went to, I went to Gyeongbokgung, and I took some pictures. Oh, to wear hanbok, okay. Let's put it this way. You wore, you wore, wore hanbok and you took some pictures. Okay. Chewon Nim. Uh, it's better to make less mistakes. So try to first work on shorter sentences. So it's better to say, Brenda, bye bye. Take care. Mm -hmm. Hi, Yan. Welcome to the show. Long time no talk, huh? So it's Chewon Nim. It's better to say, I wore hanbok, W-O-R-E, and took some pictures. Try to um, not make more um, grammatical mistakes, okay? It's better not to make mistakes. Shorter sentences. And Tony said, I visit historical sites with my husband once a month. Uh, where I'm living now is quite close to the place, so it is easy to go there. Uh, I have tried to visit historical sites more and more. That was good. Very well done. Okay, so it seems like people don't have problems giving the answer for the first one. So now let's move on to the second one, which is, do you enjoy visiting historic sites? Do you enjoy visiting a historic or historical sites? Oh, okay, here. What do you think, guys? Historical sites. Mm. I do. Like, uh, this is again when I went to, uh, when I was in living, uh, when I was living in Shanghai, I used to visit like those art museums and they're not historical, but you know, the buildings in Shanghai are very historical. They're very old and they have like all different kinds of styles from Europe, from China, from old time, ancient China. So it's really fascinating to see those like history all written around those buildings and you get to learn the history, right? So it's very interesting. And, um, when I was in Taiwan, I went to that national museum and I saw the cabbage, the jade cabbage and the meatloaf, meatloaf. Yeah. 
and it was fascinating. You go to those historical sites, you see those things, and it's great. Uh, I rarely go to historical sites, Hua Le Hong. The last time I was going to historical sites is the last three years. Okay. Hua Le Hong, I'm going to fix one sentence for you. You have to say, three years ago, I went to a historical site for the last time. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. Three years ago, I went to a historical site for the last time. Okay, three years ago, I visited. I would say I visited. I visited a historical site for the last time. Three years ago, I visited a historical site for the last time and I had a great time, but I rarely go to historical sites. Okay, so remember that for the last time. It means that that was the last time. For the last time. I went there three years ago for the last time is how you would say it. So do you enjoy visiting historic sites? Like I said, yes, because I can learn things. I can learn. I can learn historical facts. I can learn history. I can learn like wisdom. It's very educational and um, it could be fun. Yeah, it could be fun. And um, it's meaningful. I think it's meaningful. Yeah. Yes, especially I like visiting old and traditional places such as temples and shrines. Yes. Like, yeah, those words are typical words that shows it's historic. You can feel the romance? Really? Mm. Yeah. Uh, in Korea, there's a place called Gyeongju. It's uh, in the southern area. And when you go there, I think Hyun knows. I saw you, you take a picture there. Uh, like when you go to Gyeongju right now, there are these like, you know, places where you can see these leaves turn into pink. Yeah. Gyeongju has lots of historical sites. And yeah, you can take beautiful pictures with this background. It's beautiful. It's very romantic. It's very romantic. Yes. Very beautiful. I want to go there. I hope I can find some time to go there. Pretty. Very pretty. Mm. It's called Muli. Mm. So, yeah. And I can improve my knowledge of history. Mm -hmm. I can improve my knowledge of history. There are tons of places to go in Gyeongju, aren't there, Hyun? Like tons of historic places. Yeah. You can learn the history. You can learn the wisdom, actually. Wisdom of those like ancient people. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You can always learn something from historical sites. <laughs> and lastly, this is the last question. Hopefully it's easier. Uh, what can you see when you visit historical sites in your area? What can you see? Hmm. Again... I would have to say, um, Gyeongbokgung Palace. Oh, by the way, if there are any Koreans, Gyeongbokgung, the word itself, Gung, has palace, right? But in English, they write it as Gyeongbokgung Palace. Gyeongbokgung Palace. Yes. I don't know why, but they say Gyeongbokgung Palace. So when you go to Gyeongbokgung Palace, you see some old houses, old buildings. And um, you can take pictures. You can see a beautiful garden. Yeah. You know, like back in the old days, in a palace, there are always like big gardens, well-maintained with lots of trees, bonsai trees, right? And flowers, garden. And there's always that little pond. It's not a lake, but there's a little pond. Pond, P-O-N-D. So you can see that. Uh, you can see lots of artifacts. Lots of artifacts, historical artifacts. And, uh, yeah. Oh. Oh, I, I, 
I know, like when I speak English, my voice changes. That's what people say. And that's how I feel it. And that's because like, you know, English uses nasal sound. We use like nose. We sort of like, you know, close our nose and use the nasal sound. But for Korean, when I'm speaking Korean, I don't use that nasal sound. 한국어 할 때는 제가, 예. 비음을 쓰지 않죠. 그렇기 때문이에요. 예, 그래서 저도 개인적으로 한국인들이 이제 발성 연습을 할 때는 코를 막고 시켜요. 예, 그 비음 소리를 좀 연습이 되라고. So yeah, uh, this these people here right now they're talking in Korean, in Korean, <laughs> and they're talking about how my sound changes, like interchanges between like when I'm speaking English and when I'm speaking Korean, and obviously like each and every language has different like tone of voice. Like when I'm speaking Japanese, for instance, I use more like Korean voice. You know, I have like more of that Korean voice going on when I'm speaking Japanese. And uh, uh, what can I say? <laughs> but um, when I'm speaking English, I have more powerful voice because I'm using this like throat part more pressed and then I'm using a nasal sound. So yeah, that's why I have a different sound here. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Boston Jun. <laughs> There's my friend there. Hi, Boston Jun. <laughs> and Hyun, I see many statues in the, in the historical sites, and those statues are old soldiers who have made a contribution to the peace and independence of my country. Yeah, I pay respect to them too. Deep respect. Keiko, in my town, there's a boat course. It used to be a venue of boat races when 1964 Tokyo Olympic Games was held. Wow. I feel very sad about the Tokyo Olympic for this year, yeah. Hopefully next year it could be held. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, you have to know what to talk about your regions, you know, like travel spots because they like to ask about this very often nowadays okay so be prepared and also talk about some food that you can enjoy while you're on the tour because in korea when you go to different parts you can enjoy different kinds of food and mostly people know bibimbap people know bulgogi but there are other things. There's something called chuncheon takgalbi. And, you know, like when you go to my hometown, you can enjoy lots of seafood. So you can talk about those kind of things too. Mm -hmm. And Tony, in my area, I can see some palace. There are some events such as experienced wearing. Uh... Okay, tell me more. You can see the stone walls of the castle built 1300 years ago. That's long, long time ago. The stone, stone wall remains as it was at that time. Beautiful. You know, just by listening to it, reading it, it sounds very beautiful. Great. That's why you said it's very romantic. Okay, it's very romantic. I feel very, it's very, don't say I feel, just say I, it feels. It feels very romantic. Okay? Well done. Okay, so you don't only have to talk about things you see. You can talk about things you can do, you can go on a guided tour, or you could say, talk about things you can eat or things you could enjoy. Take pictures, buy souvenirs. You can buy souvenirs, right? And also you can experience like, uh, you know, in some places, like when you go to palace, you can experience their real life, like ancient real life. And you can experience making tea, drinking tea, those kind of things. Oh, sometimes, I think it's a seasonal thing, but when you go to Gyeongbokgung Palace, you get to experience how to make kimchi. Okay? So those kind of things. You can talk about many, 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 many things. You don't just talk about the things you see. Okay? Give as much details as you can. That's the way to do it. All right. Now we're going to move on to part four. Part four. Okay, I'm gonna increase the chart so you guys can have a better look at it. You can see half of my face here. My half of my face, I'm here, guys. Okay. Have a look at it. Oh, Kevin Ooze here. Hello. Mm. There are so many things I can see when visiting historical sites, such as ancient artifacts, long, loose cloth, and so on. I'm also can learn. Okay, I can also learn experience from past time. Oh yeah, that's good. Oh, I can gain secondhand experience or I can learn from the ancestors. Maybe you can put it that way. 
I can learn from my ancestors and I can gain secondhand experience, okay? Secondhand is something that you learn from the others, not through your real experience, okay? All right, now it says on the top, sweets and snacks conference. Great conference, I would like to go there. <laughs> okay, and it says a welcome speech, mm -hmm. demonstration, reinventing classic desserts. All right, desserts, like classic cheesecake or ice cream sundae, they will reinvent it. Workshop, unusual ingredients for desserts. Unusual, something unusual, all right? And lunch break, demonstration, gluten-free dessert ideas because some people are cannot like digest gluten. So people have problem eating gluten. So I guess gluten-free. Workshop, making healthier dessert choices. Yeah, I hope there could be healthier desserts. And you know, if you go there early, it's $50, but on site, it's $75. Hi, Chan. Welcome to the show. I see you there. Stay there. <laughs> don't go. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't worry. I don't have COVID. Okay. So uh, here goes the first question. Listen up, guys. Hello. My name is Sophie Hunter. I would like to participate in the Sweets and Snacks Conference, which will be held next month. Before I sign up for the event, I would like to check some details. Could you answer a few questions I have about the upcoming event? Now, guys, get ready. The first one says, what time will the first session start and end? Who is the speaker? That's the first question. Now, type in the answer. What time will the first session start and end? Who is the speaker? What time will the first session start and end? And who is the speaker? Give me your answers. Give it to me here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, for part one, it's very important that, uh, no, no, sorry, part four, it's very important that you use correct grammars as well. Do Korean people eat kimchi every day? Yeah, we do. We do. We eat kimchi every day. Yes. Orange cheese here. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to the show. It seems like you've been busy. Midterm, huh? A lot of my students are taking tests nowadays at school. Korean people eat kimchi every day, Monica. We have all kinds of kimchi. In fact, in my refrigerator right now, actually, this is a studio that I have in my house and I have like two, three different kinds of kimchi. We have kimchi made of just normal cabbage, the Chinese cabbage, and I have kimchi made from a green onion. Yeah, and it's really good. I like that one better. Pa kimchi. <laughs> In Korea, we call it pa kimchi. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, Tony says the first session will start at 9 a.m. Okay. For 30 minutes. Now, Tony, just say the first session will start at 9 a.m. And for the 30 minutes, you have to lose that. You don't need to say that. And it will be led by Ethan Kurt. Okay, Taeyong. The first session will start at 9 a.m. And Ethan Kurt will give what? Give what, right? Okay, so I don't see a perfect answer yet. Somebody's got to give me the perfect answer so I can move on to the next question. So try harder. KG, what are you doing? I'm waiting for your answer, okay? Uh... The first session will start at 9 a.m. and end at 9.30 a.m. It will be given by Ethan Cart. Please keep it in mind. Okay. Tren, you got it there. You got it, girl. Uh, it will be given by Ethan Cart. Please keep it in mind. Perfect. KG, first session will run from 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. You can also say that we'll run and Ethan Cart, or Kurt, will give a welcome speech. Perfectly done. Well done. And Hua Le Hong, let me see. The conference starts. But actually, Hua Le Hong, it has to be in future tense because this is something that's going to happen in the future. Okay? So when you say it into a future tense, it has to be the conference will start at 9 a.m and will end, right? End, will end at 5 p.m. Okay, will, use will, 
the proverb will. It's future tense. It will happen. Roy C, the first session will start at 9 a.m. and Ethan Kurt will give a welcome speech. The problem is I asked for some more detail. I said, what time will the first session start and end? And who's the speaker? So it's very important you provide all the details that it's requesting for. What time will the first session start and end? Who is the speaker? Okay. I think you pretty much got the answer for the first one. So we're going to move on to the second question. Guys, listen up. Second question. Second question. Ready? I have to leave the conference at 6 p.m. Will I miss anything important? I have to leave the conference at 6 p.m. Will I miss anything important? I have to leave the conference at 6 p.m. Will I miss anything important? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. I'll be leaving at 6 p.m. Will I miss anything? Ethan Cart, Monica said, We'll give a welcome speech at 9 a.m., so please don't be late. Okay. But, Monica, it's better to specifically indicate it will start at, it will finish at. Okay? Because they ask for those two things, specifically. Tell me more, guys. I'll be leaving at 6 p.m. Will I miss anything? Anything? Yes, let me know. Wow. It's getting a little bit quieter outside. You know, it's Friday night and I start the show at 8. And there are like so many cars outside right out the building. So it was really, really noisy earlier. And Taeyong, actually all of the sessions will end at 5 p.m. So you don't worry about it. Perfect. That's the answer they're asking for, right? That's the answer they're actually waiting for. Well, uh, orange chi. Oh, so you d won't miss anything because the conference will finish at 5 p.m. Don't worry about it. Perfect answer. Well done. I'm afraid not. Hua Le Hong at 6 p.m. The conference will finish. Okay, good. Uh, Marcella, actually, no, the conference will end at 5 p.m. So won't miss anything. Perfect. And Tran, you won't miss any important sessions because the last session will end at 5 p.m. Don't worry, people, everybody, you got this right. I'm happy to say that you will not miss any session at the conference because the last session will, will no, no, Tony, it has to be will finish. The last session will finish at 5 p.m. So you don't have to worry about it. Well, you can say we'll be finished, but yeah. Uh, Keiko, no, you won't miss anything. The conference will finish at 5 p.m. That's well done. Uh, Teji said the event will end at 5 p.m. So you can attend all sessions. Well done, everybody. It seems like you guys were ready for this one. Damn, it was a tricky, I thought it was a tricky one, but you got everything, mostly done. Like everybody's got most of them done. Now, the last question. The last question would be, <clears throat> could you please tell me all the details about the demonstrations which will be given at the conference? Could you please tell me all the details about the demonstration which will be given at the conference? Could you please give me all the details about the demonstrations which will be given, given at the conference? Now, these are the tips, clues, demonstrations which will be given right given at the conference that's very important right now let me know guys the demonstrations will the word given okay Dem it's really easy to find right they're trying to make it easier for you guys because they want you to like focus on grammars you know, they want you to focus more on grammar. So they want to check on whether you can use the right grammar to produce the sentences using limited like information, limited bits and bytes of information. So you got to show them, I know how to use it. I know how to use the future tense. I know how to use the prepositions. I know how to do this. I got this right. I'll show you. I'm going to get it right. So grammar, Teiji, if you want to get this part right, grammar is the most important thing. And I think your grammar is fine. Like I said again, like overall, it's all about the pronunciation. Yeah, pronunciation is so important. Um, one trick I would like to tell you, I'm going to tell you at the end of the show, um, 
it's about using your like vocals here your vocal here yeah I'll show you how to do it there are some exercises that you can do like it's just language like Korean language and Japanese language we produce sound differently compared to English whereas Chinese and English they have like similar voice tones so it's easier for them to make you know similar English sound Monica fortunately you won't miss anything because the conference will end at 5 p.m. please keep in mind all right so that was from the last one I'm waiting for the next question uh, answer the question last one is could you please give me all the details about the demonstrations which will be given at the conference could you please give me all the details about the demonstration which will be given at the conference yeah is the question you shouldn't give up guys don't give up I know it's gonna be a long answer but don't give up don't don't oh I got it here trend Seth Bowers will give a demonstration that was perfect give a demonstration good on gluten-free dessert ideas and it will start at 1 30 and end at 3 30 p.m. please remember that okay but remember Tren there's one more there's not only one there are two sessions I think you're missing one Taeyong, sure there are two demonstrations first from 9 30 a.m to 10 30 a.m there will be a demonstration about rcd right okay you're abbreviating given by amy watts in addition at 1 30 p.m seth bowers will give a demonstration on okay Taeyong, you got this perfectly right i i see you're making it into abbreviation fine well according to the schedule that was well done according to the schedule there are two firstly there are, are there is orange tea there is a demonstration on reinventing classic desserts given by amy watts and uh, and i'm going to read the and secondly seth bowers will give a demonstration on gluten-free please keep that in mind perfect Taiwan name there are two scheduled demonstrations first amy watts will give a demonstration give a demonstration on reinventing classic desserts at 9 30 and then another demonstration about gluten-free dessert it will be given by Seth Bowers at 1 30. okay I have a problem with the part where you said Chewanim. first Amy Watts will give a demonstration you're missing that word give a demonstration on reinventing okay make sure to put in that word Le Hong, the demonstration will begin at 1 30 p.m. and end at 3 30 p.m. No, there are two. There are two. Hua Hu Le Hong, there are two demonstrations. Ramazan Buza, demonstrations are given by Ethan Cart at 9 30 a.m. and Seth Bowers at 1 30 p.m. Now, Ramazan Buza, you have to give more details about each demonstration, okay? You have to talk about the, the title of it or the topic because that's why they're giving you 30 seconds for this question you're given 30 seconds not 15 so you have to give every single detail all right Kevin there are two things first at 9 30 a.m. there will be a demonstration on reinventing classic desserts given by me and then at 1 30 Seth Bauer will lead a demonstration on actually Kevin it's not lead it's give 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 a demonstration please be on time since demonstrations will start precisely okay it's give a demonstration Kevin you got to remember that give Amy Watts will be demonstrating reinventing classic desserts and Seth Bowers will be demonstrating gluten-free dessert ideas okay demonstrating your umteji you're using that as a verb that's a very good try well done oh tony oh tony wrote something in korea he said i'm taking a test tomorrow and is it okay if i speak slowly it's perfectly fine you know now i give you two examples here okay we're done with the last question so i'm gonna just wrap up this part um i'll give you two examples like i had two students now i have i think we have auto auto focus here today okay I had two students now one student spoke really fast really quickly really fast everything memorized but somehow he seemed to always get level six 
he's saying everything right, but it's just too fast. And sometimes he's getting grammars all mixed up, so it's too fast. And this one student was always talking very slow. She's getting all the answers, talking slowly with almost no mistakes. Now, this one, always talking fast, thinks that he can always get level seven because he's very confident. He's talking really fast. Teacher, I memorized everything. But somehow, he always gets only level six, 150. But this girl, on her second attempt, on her second test, on her first test, she got six, 150. She spoke slowly. No grammatical mistakes. On her next test, she got level seven, okay? So it's not about talking fast or talking slowly. It's giving the right answer in the right grammars, okay? That's what's important. All right, and here, there are two scheduled sessions. <laughs> First, Amy Watts will give a demonstration on reinvention classic desserts at 9.30, okay? Oh, I was laughing because I can hear somebody snore in another room. Uh, yeah, my next door neighbor. <laughs> There are two scheduled sessions. First, Amy Watts will give a demonstration on, yeah, give a demonstration. Yeah, that's what you have to remember, give a demonstration. Or there will be a demonstration given by somebody. Okay, good. We're done with part four. And here's part five, a little phone. Oh. Uh, Taeyong Nim said, uh, <laughs> Taeyong Nim, does it mean you have time remaining? Uh, I say keep talking. All right. It's something like this. You have lots of time given. Sometimes you're given 30 seconds. Sometimes you're given 45 seconds. Sometimes you're given 60 seconds. The best is to fulfill every answer, the given time. Fulfill the time for every answer. This is the way to get higher score, okay? Say as much as you can and fulfill that time. Fulfill that recording time. That's how you get better score. That's what I can tell you. Just keep talking. Taeyongnim, do you understand? Keep talking. And Tony, you say, um, you think in your head, but it doesn't come out here. That's because you didn't practice much enough, okay? This is exercising. It's not studying. This is practicing. It's not, it's not, it's not knowledge. This is practicing, okay? You know, there is a famous baseball player called Park chan -ho. Remember Koreans? We know this guy, Park chan -ho, right? And he is a pure native Korean. He is Korean. And he lived in America for such a long time in the league. He was playing like NBA, M M American baseball league. He was playing in that. And, you know, he was living in America for such a long time that he somehow like was always talking in English, right? So when Korean reporters go to America to interview him, his Korean sounded really like awkward, very strange, like as if he, he forgot Korean. He lost his Korean ability. That's what happens. Like when you don't practice, the language, like talking, speaking ability goes away. Bye-bye. Okay, so you have to practice a lot. You have to practice, talk, okay? All right, now guys, listen up. I'm going to read the message. Listen up. Hello, this is Maria Pearson, the PR director of the Centennial Community Center. As you know, the Autumn Music Festival is scheduled to be held next week. It is the biggest event that all locals really look forward to. Earlier this year, I had reserved the banquet hall at Gloria Hotel for the venue. I just called the hotel to, you know, check some things and uh, to the ma hotel manager to make sure everything is under control. 
and have found a severe problem. It seems like one of the hotel staff members has double booked the banquet hall. And in order to compensate, they are offering us the grand ballroom for the price of the banquet hall, which is a bigger venue. Changing the venue for the event isn't a problem, but we will have to find a way to let people know about the new location. We only have a week till the event and all the posters and flyers will have now the wrong information about the venue. Now, since you're my assistant, I want you to come up with some ideas to set things right. So nothing will go wrong on the day of the event. Now, please call me back at extension 7 to share your ideas with me. All right. Bye. That's the situation. And you know what to do. You have to summarize it. Part five is all about summarizing. Now, while you guys are working on summarizing and providing the solutions, let's work on summarizing first, guys, okay? Let me know what you heard. Summarize what you heard. Okay, we can associate this, Brenda. Are you still there, Brenda? We can associate this with TOEIC writing part two, okay? Now, this is phone conversation, right? But TOEIC writing is an email, email response. So some things are different. You wouldn't say hello, right? In toit writing, you would say, dear somebody, somebody. But you know what? Here's the key. When you are working and when you're writing a professional letter, you don't say dear. That's like a little awkward. D-E-A-R is for your friends and family and your loved ones. You wouldn't say dear somebody, somebody, but you would rather say attention. A-T-T-E-N-T-I-O-N. Attention, Gwen. And comma. You would say, attention, Gwen, comma, I, you didn't hear, you say, I read, blah, 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 blah. Instead of saying, I heard, you would say, I read something, 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 then it is a problem. So you'd like to get my help. All right. Everything else is the same. Just like we do part five for TOEIC speaking, you write the same things that's required for part, you know, two of TOEIC writing. And that's what you do. Yeah, Brenda left. I forgot that yeah, she, she, she was curious about toy writing. But anyway, so when you're calling, you have to say hello. But when you're writing, you don't say, instead of saying dear, say attention when you're writing a professional email. Okay. Attention, Gwen. Okay. So, oh, the problem is because double booking has occurred in the hall of the venue you plan to use. Oh my gosh, Teji, your use of language has really improved and it's very, very accurate. There are no more things to fix in your answers. You know what I'm going to say, right? It's only about the pronunciation. It's only about the sound. Mm. And then you can get level seven for sure. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Any more people summarizing what's happening here? Let me know. <laughs> any more okay and when you want to get higher score try to use any as many words you heard in the message try to use as many words and expressions you remember from the message that's the key to getting higher score okay so remember I said there's a music festival. Then you can say, oh, I heard that you are in charge of the music festival, all right? And you booked a banquet hall. You reserved a banquet hall. You remember and you say it and you show them that I remember this, I heard this. You're trying to, you have to prove your listening ability. You have to show them, I can listen English and I can understand and this is what I heard. You have to give that information so that they can confirm. Orange chi, yes. There is a problem that is double booked. Okay, now we have to understand how to use the word double booked, okay? The venue has been double booked. The venue has been double booked. Or, like what Teji said, double booking has occurred. Double booking has occurred. Okay, double booking has occurred. Or the hotel double booked the venue. 
The hotel double, double book the venue. You have to know how to use this word correctly. You can use it either, either as a verb, verb, 동사, or double book as a verb, or you can use it as a noun, 명사, double booking, double booking. There's double booking, okay? Uh, okay, um, how to let people know and you have only one week left. Yes, that's pretty much what the message was about. And Monica calling you about the message you gave me. Your message mentioned that there is a problem with our... Okay, now Monica, I'm going to give you some tips. Now, first of all, what I want you to do is sort out all those like, you know, messages that doesn't relate to the, the phone message here. Okay? They don't care about those memorized sentences. Just say, hello, this is Monica. I heard that you are in charge of the music festival and you booked the banquet hall. However, there's a problem because the hotel double booked the space. You have to provide what you heard more, not what you memorize, okay? And Monica, right now, that, that three sentence that you just wrote here on the screen, except for your name, is all not related to the situation. Uh, Teji, you should discuss with the hotel side which hall you should use and decide again. Okay, that's good. Taeyong, I heard you have a problem with double, double reservation avenue. Oh, it's not avenue, it's venue. Venue, V-E-N-U-E, -E, is another word for place, venue. First, uh, why don't you send a mass message to the mess message? You're saying message, right? Taeyongni, message. And mention that you have to check a new location for notification. So I think it's a good idea to give a small gift to the visitors as compensation of inconvenience. Okay, I like the second one, Taeyong. I like the second um, solution. Ramazan, the problem is about the double booking. PR staff wants to set the problem with the hotel manager. PR staff wants to inform their um, visitors in a week. They haven't enough time. Okay, Ramazan, I'm going to give you a big tip on how to work on this. Now, when you are providing answer for part five, you have to use something called a template. It's better to use a template, okay? Just so that you know, okay, it's better to use something like this. A. No. Okay, so it's better to use something called a template, all right? Because you're leaving a phone message. And you know, when you're saying something like a phone message, some messages are already like fixed. There are fixed expressions that you have to use or you can use, right? So just, oh uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Monica, if that's your opening of the template, then I think it's a little too long, yeah. You see? Like all that gray space over there, all those blank lines are what I ask my students to fill in with the information they heard in the message. And it starts almost right away. Hello, this is Gwen, I heard that. And I start the thing right away. But right now, uh, Monica's template is a little too long for the opening, yeah. It's unnecessary. I'm just telling you, Monica, it's unnecessary. All the gray parts are the necessary parts to get score. Like actually the words written there are sort of like um, not useless, but it doesn't relate to the message. So it doesn't play a big part on getting the answer, like high score. Uh, Teji, moreover, why don't you reinvestigate why double booking occurred this time? Okay. Now this is like, <laughs> I know you work, so you're being very like, you know, very detailed about how to solve this problem. I think that's a good way. Yeah, that's a good way because you can prevent this happen again in the future, right? That's a good solution. Okay, all right. And Tony, what I understand is that hotel made a double booking by mistake, so they offer you a new banquet hall as a compensation. Mm. Mm hmm. And Tony, I want to uh, give you some advice on try to make your sentences shorter okay i heard what i understand is i heard that hotel made a double booking by mistake so they offer you a new banquet hall as compensation okay uh orange tea firstly i think you should discuss with the hotel to get back the venue that you have booked before mm -hmm. you gotta fight 
<laughs> okay, and moreover, why don't you send the email like announcement? That should be nice too. Oh, email like announcement. Yeah, you should tell people about the change of location. You should, you know, send messages about the new location. Send text messages about the new location. That could be one way, right? Well done, guys. You know what? I'm going to... I'm going to... Oh, I have a timer here. I don't have to look at my phone. I'm going to use my template and I'm going to talk for one minute and I am going to talk to this person, okay? I am the assistant and this person is my boss, so I'll be calling her. Hello, this is Gwen. Yes, uh, I heard that you're in charge of the music festival this time and because of the music festival, you booked the place, the venue at the hotel. However, there is a problem because the hotel made a mistake and they double booked the place. So now they're offering another place as compensation. You don't know what to do with that. So you'd like to get some help with this matter. Well, first of all, I'm sorry to hear about the situation. However, I'm happy to say that there is a way to help you out. And after looking into the situation, I came up with the following suggestions. Hmm. Well, first of all, I think it is a good idea to just change the venue because I think bigger place is better. And why don't we send, you know, text messages and emails to all the participants? Then there should be no problem. Well, those are my suggestions and if you need more help just feel free to call me back anytime and i wasn't able to say bye but it doesn't matter because bye isn't so important you know what i say right you know what i'm saying you don't have to say all those like you know words aside from what the message was trying to say okay so i said first just change the venue because it's bigger the better. Bigger space is better. And second, why don't you send messages and emails to everyone? Then there should be no problem, is what I said. And when you're memorizing, now this is the most important thing. Ramazan, I told you to memorize a template. When you're memorizing, like I showed you just now, you have to sound very natural. You have to act as if you're not memorizing. <laughs> That's the key. That's the key to succeeding part five, okay guys? Don't sound like a robot. Don't sound like a broken record. You have to sound natural. That's very important. All right, now we're closing down to part six. Here goes the question. All right, the question here says, do you think that vending machines in high school should only sell healthy foods? Do you think that vending machines in high schools should only sell healthy food? Healthy food. Healthy food. So what are healthy foods? What are healthy foods? Now, I have some experience with unhealthy food when I was in the States because, you know, we in, in America have all kinds of unhealthy food like out there in the grocery store and you know, like we always have to have like lunch boxes ready, lunch ready and a brown bag lunch you would call it and inside those brown bag lunches you know there would be a sandwich, classic sandwich like PJ, peanut butter and jelly sandwich and um, also there would be a chip like potato chips or Dorito chips, those like the corn chips, things like that. And or also there's something called Twinkies. It's like sponge cake kind of thing. And there's like cream inside, those kind of very unhealthy stuff. Or if you're really health conscious, they would, you know, mom, they would put like apples or bananas in there. But mostly, you know, food that kids eat aren't so healthy. Yeah. They're very greasy, they're very salty, and they're very high in calories. So, and also like vending machines. Like when you go to vending machines, the first thing I, I would go for would be M&Ms, sneakers, chocolate bars, and like chips and cookies. They sell all the kinds of the things like that. Oreos and sodas like Coke, Pepsi, Sprite, Dr. Pepper. 
those are all the things that are considered unhealthy, right? They're un they're unhealthy, unhealthy, right? So, mm, yeah, normally vending machines sell unhealthy foods so i think that's why they're asking something like this but you know what my experience of visiting japan in japan there are so many different kinds of vending machines so like vending machine for me would typically sell something very unhealthy but in japan they were selling all kinds of things so yeah i think you have a lot to talk about there Monica, my template ending is sh uh, should have any question. Don't hesitate to call me back. Have a nice day. Thank you. Mm, doesn't matter. Because like, like I showed you just now, Monica, um, like in the end, eventually you won't have enough time to finish the whole message, right? Then it's better to have a shorter ending. Yeah. I wasn't even able to fit in my whole template. I wasn't able to say bye in the end, right? So long intro and long ending isn't so good and it doesn't really affect you getting higher score and okay i'll show it to you again that's the reason my why my template the intro the beginning part and the ending part is quite short okay it's quite short it's very important to just dive into the message just go direct don't just go directly into it just say hello this is somebody and then you just start talking about the message summarize it provide the solutions and voila that's it okay tony i think vending machines in high school should only sell healthy food hmm. because teenagers are in the growth period also these days they expose to unhealthy foods a lot okay now tony this is a typical way of how koreans like to give opinions okay this is a typical way of how most Asian people give opinions. They want to sound very like, you know, let's say, mm, they want to say, sound like, okay, you guys are like debating tone. All right. For example, hold on. Teji, for example, nowadays many students don't eat healthy food, so eating healthy food at school is a good opportunity. Also, they will know what kind of food is nutritious through the vending machine. Okay. Now, Teji, the same. We Asians tend to sort of like explain things. We try to explain something. You guys try to explain something and this is that and that is this. But eventually, when you're explaining something, it's really hard to explain something for one minute and it's really hard to give long answers when you're explaining something unless you are a professional in that field unless you are like very very have deep knowledge about the thing that you're talking about unless unless you measure in something like this you don't have much to talk about okay so explaining something 설명하기 explaining is not a good way to approach. That's why I always tell my students to give an example. Give an example. Okay? So, for instance, if this is my, like, if I, I took this test, my answer would be something like this. Like, when I was in high school, there was a vending machine. And, you know, it sold unhealthy food. Like sodas, chocolates, and so on. I always bought those junk food, like unhealthy food, and I became unhealthy, so it wasn't good for me. You know, that's why they should remove unhealthy food and they should sell only healthy food. I would give an example as if I had that situation, I was in that situation, as if I have an experience related to this situation. That's how you should do it. That's how you should do it, okay? Now, this is something that Asians are not used to. Most Asians love to explain something. And it's not good. No good, no good. Not helpful to speak for one minute. Uh, Taehyung Nim, I think the vending machine in high school should only sell healthy food because high school students uh, could grow taller. Mm. For example, I was in high school. I'm very small, so my teacher gave me a lot of healthy food every day, okay, such as milk, vitamin. I'm 190 centimeters because I eat healthy food every day. Oh, okay. 
I get it. So you ate lots of healthy foods. So you grew taller. You became taller. Good. Hyun, I think it should sell healthy food because students' health are extremely important. Oh, I love that word, Hyun. Extremely. The high school students should make sure that food selling to are good for health. Now, Hyun, from then on, you have to give an example. Your own experience. Tron. Uh, in my opinion, vending machines in high school should only sell healthy food and uh, first can improve students' health. As a result, students will perform better at school and their results will be improved much, okay? And second, when only healthy foods are sold, it shows that teachers do care about students' health. I think it will improve. This is the relationship. Okay, in short, it's necessary the vending machines only sell healthy food. Tran, your answer is perfectly scripted. You're providing two reasons. You're explaining why, okay? But I'm just worried that not for not every, you know, questions, you would have two, like, very specific reasons, right? So try to approach some questions using examples, like I showed you. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm telling you, okay? And Ramazan, vending machines should only sell healthy foods because kids have to learn which food healthy or unhealthy. By this way, they can get good experience about the healthy feeding. Mm. You also, Ramazan, answer good. But guys, we're talking about one minute answer. Now, if you want to talk for one minute, there's got to be a story. There has got to be a story. Okay? Uh, you know, President Trump is right now doing rallies because, you know, he needs to get more voters to vote for him, right? And every time he's talking to all these numbers of people, he gives examples. He's like, I was in your shoes. I know what you think because I have similar experience. He's trying to persuade people by telling them some stories. I think some of them could be true and some of them might not, but you know, even at those important places, those people like President Trump, he's giving examples. He's telling stories to make people understand and believe what he's trying to do, okay? So examples are very important when you're speaking the English language. That's how this language is, okay? So I'll show you one way of doing. Now, I'm not saying this is like the right way of doing it. This is just one way of doing it. Tran, your answer was right. Ramazan, your answer was good. Taeyongnim, your answer was perfectly fine. But I'm just showing you another way of, you know, talking longer and giving a good answer. Listen up. Uh, I think that vending machines in high school should only sell healthy foods. And there are several reasons to support my opinion. And most of all, it's very helpful for the students' health. Uh, for example, when I was in high school, during the first year, there was a vending machine and they only sold unhealthy food, such as chocolate, you know, sodas, and so on. So I ate lots of unhealthy food every day. Eventually, I gained weight. I lost my health. I became very unhealthy. So um, I wasn't happy with it. But one day, the school got rid of all the unhealthy food and they start selling healthy food in that vending machine. And I was able to eat lots of healthy food, such as fruit, salad, and so on. And, you know, I became healthier and I was able to lose weight and I no longer gained more weight. So it was very helpful for my health. And that is why I think so. Okay, so um, this way of talking, this way of answering provides um, more details because it's like as if I'm sharing my personal experience, right? Which is untrue because that is not a true story, but I sort of fabricated that story that would fit into this question so I could support my idea, right? And mainly, basically, you guys are saying the same thing. You guys are saying, oh, it's not good for the health. But I was telling a story. So yeah, try to think of stories to work with instead of just explaining. And uh, that's what it says. Give specific reasons and details to support your opinion. Give specific reasons and details to support your opinion. And again, I'm saying this so many times tonight. It's better to give more details and talk until the end of time. Talk until the end of time. Okay? And again, this has big relation with uh, part three of toy writing because part three of toy writing is basically this question and you write. 
okay? And even for part three, you do not have to explain everything like what you guys are doing. Write a story and you can write longer passages and voila, it's easier to get scores. I mean, I did it. I did it. This is the way I did it when I, you know, got perfect score on toy writing. I don't take toy writing tests very often because it's so long and you get really exhausted. <laughs> like toy speaking test is really short. I love it. But toy writing and toy LC and RC, they're so long. I don't take it often. But when I'm taking those tests, especially toy writing I'm talking about, I write stories for the last part. And I have so many things to talk about, all the details, everything. And, you know, it's really not that hard to fill in that, you know, word, you know, the words that you have to write. So I always tell my students, just write stories. Don't explain. Do not explain. Do not. Explaining is really hard to do, you know, way of speaking. It's not easy unless you're an expert. Okay. All right, so I said some things about toy writing today because I wanted to give you some tips on how to approach toy writing in an easier way. Tran, I'm gonna take the toy writing test and I'm very nervous because I self-study. Could you give me some tips in taking the writing test? Like I said, Tran, um, part one, short sentence, no grammatical mistakes. That's very important for all three parts of toy writing. And part, make sure to know when to put the period and comma, okay? and capital letter whenever you start a new sentence and for part two email don't say dear somebody okay this is a business mail so you have to say attention somebody and there's got to be a comma even when you're saying dear dear gwen there's got to be a comma not period comma and make sure in the end you would say regards comma gwen or you could say best regards comma gwen you don't say sincerely Sincerely is for like, you know, your loved ones, family, friends, love them. You would say best regards, comma, Gwen. Okay. Those are some tips for part two. And for part three, don't explain. Just like I did for part six, try to write a story that backs up your idea. Then you can write more. You can write more. You can write longer. Tadashi, welcome to the show. <laughs> welcome. Konnichiwa, <laughs> konbanwa. Welcome to the show. Okay, so that's how you do it. And oh, about uh, Teji, about the voice. All right, we're gonna go back to part one. We're gonna talk a little bit about improving your um. Okay, improving your pronunciation. Okay. Now this is one way of uh, practicing English when you want to improve your pronunciation. Now, forget about the words, forget about the words, and try to link everything there. I'll show you. Welcome back to Channel A Weather Forecast. I'm Chris Rodney and I have some updates to share with you about this week's weather. Notice how I am just pushing my air out so that I could finish the sentence. Again, winter is coming up and the temperature is expected to drop below zero degrees Celsius during the upcoming week. And I know it doesn't sound good, but this is a way of practicing. Breathing again. Please make sure to put on the heavy jacket, gloves, and boots when going outside. You breathe again. Coming up next is the sports news. And you practice your enunciation, okay? You have to practice pushing out your sound and breath when you're speaking English. I told you in the beginning of this lecture, in the beginning of this show, Korean language is different from English language, the way we produce the sound. Japanese is very similar to Korean. That's why Japanese and Korean people, they have similar problem when they speak English, okay? You have to understand how to produce the right sound in English. I think same thing goes to people in Vietnam, people in Taiwan, but people who speak Chinese, they have that similar sound already. I think even Vietnamese, you guys have similar sound already. 
So you guys have less hardship speaking English, getting the right sound. But for Koreans and Japanese, we do not have that similar sound going on, the nasal sound, all right? And another thing I, you know, recommend is to suppress your vocals here. You know, like when Americans or, you know, English speakers, they speak English, they would sort of like, they have like muscles here, right? They would suppress the vocals, sort of like squeeze like this, and then they would produce a sound. So they wouldn't say, Welcome back to channel A weather forecast. That's like opening up your vocals, right? Like your soprano or what was that? You're doing something, yeah, like singing. No, you have to press it. Welcome back to channel A weather forecast. I'm Chris Rodney and I have some updates to share with you about this week's weather. Winter is coming up and the temperature is expected to drop below zero degrees Celsius during the upcoming week. When you, when you, no, no, don't make that sound. Please make sure to put on the heavy jacket, glove. No, please make sure to put on a heavy jacket, gloves, and boots when going outside. Okay, so those are some things that you can apply when you are practicing. Okay, and Tran, your videos are helpful. My speaking has been improved much. Now I'm trying to have American accent. Thank you very much. Okay. I mean, American accent, Australian accent, Canadian accent, British accent, anything will do as long as you can stick with one accent. Because I have some Korean students who like to, you know, improve their British accent, but somehow they get it mixed with American accent and that's when something strange occur. That's really weird, okay? So if you like American accent, like what I'm using, just stick with American accent. Okay, if you like British accent, then you have to do it from A to Z in British accent. That's how I tell my students, okay? Or else it's gonna get all tangled up. It's gonna be weird, okay? All right, so I think that's all I have to talk about today. And today I sort of like, you know, blended in the, the, the tips for toy writing. I hope you find it helpful. I am planning to create a separate video for toy writing for those of you who are studying on your own. That should be also helpful. And also nowadays I've been doing some Zoom, you know, lessons and my students find it quite helpful. They think that, you know, learning and studying one-on-one -on -one in person is more effective but actually on zoom through zoom we can do very effective sessions so in the description box of today's video i've gave some you know information on how you could apply for zoom lessons with me one-on-one -on -one. so maybe you would find that helpful too so yep i'll be back again with more live content next month and let me see let me check the date let me check the date it's going to be november the third week it's going to be the 20th Okay, so 20th, Friday, November, I'll be coming back with more content live. So please be there. Yes, it was nice to see you, Teji, Hyun, Nyahaha, Orange Chi, Tran. And Teji, I'm gonna send you a separate email regarding your answers that I heard, okay? But I wanted to tell you these tips on making more of, you know, better pronunciation. All right, and looking forward to watching my writing videos. Thank you, I'll try to make them fast okay and i'll see you next month guys take care be safe be healthy stay healthy until next month bye bye mm -hmm.